Something I love exploring in my tracks is the combination of a real drummer or drumming with electronic production and sound design and kind of glitchy electronic produced beats um, and the fusion of those two things together. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the different methods I use for creating drums in software and some of the ways that I combine all of these together to create dense and quite interesting drum or percussion sections for my tracks. So as a bit of a preface to everything that I'm going to be doing, um, I kind of generally view music or I generally view all music in kind of one of two worlds. For me, there's kind of like the organic world and that's basically anything that's made with like real instruments or traditional things like guitar, bass, drums, into that, you know, you might get genres like rock, classical music, jazz, and that kind of thing. And then I sort of consider the world of electronic music as kind of its own domain. And yeah, some of the stuff that you can do in that world is like, it goes beyond what's capable of a human on a real instrument. I'm interested in where these two worlds kind of intersect. You can do a lot of different things with it, particularly when it comes to drums. Some of the earliest music that I ever got into was stuff like Aphex Twin, Phoenician Snares, IDM and Breakcore, and generally stuff that has like a lot of crazy produced beats in it. Pretty much always just been curious what it'd be like if kind of an electronic artist like Aphex Twin or Phoenician Snares had some sort of live band or there was a live band that attempted to play that type of music um, and kind of having the two things accommodate each other. Possibly all sounds a little bit heady, but I think it's actually pretty simple once I get into it. So I'm gonna break this down into a few sections that make it a little bit more easy to digest. It kind of breaks down in gradual layers. Typically, I will start with programming an acoustic drums part, um, and this is where I'll establish the tempo, the groove, and the kind of feel or pulse of, the, of everything else that is gonna come on top of it later. Second part is sequencing and creating electronic beats and percussion to sort of happen around the acoustic drum parts. Stage three is using effects and processing to create textures and kind of things to add interest and flavour to the acoustic drums and they're kind of yeah extended techniques and methods that I use for electronic production and then finally I'm going to talk about how I kind of layer this all together um, and I'll show you the kind of the end resulting sandwich of delicious drums percussion that we're going to make. All you need for this is a laptop and a DAW of your choosing. Where possible I'll try to point out free or built-in alternatives to the third party or paid plugins that I'm using to do this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start programming my acoustic drums part. Just to explain this kind of clearly, uh, I don't have a song idea in mind at all at this point. I'm literally just gonna like program a beat and work from there and see what happens from it. So yeah, there's not really any right or wrong way to do this. So first thing to basically do uh, is to decide what tempo we're gonna use. I'm gonna stick it at 175, 175 BPM. I just like this tempo because it basically works for a bunch of genres that I like. So it will work for drum and bass, it will work for metal, it will work for hip hop and jazz. It'll work for rock. So yeah, in Logic, if I hit this little plus button, I'm gonna bring up a software instrument. To begin with, if you're using Logic, you've got this uh, drum kit designer built into it. So if I open that up. I think there is something called Drummer. Hang on a sec, where is Drummer? Yeah, there is something called Drummer where it will kind of automatically create drum parts for you, but I actually prefer to just do everything by hand. And yeah, if I just pencil in a region here on my grid, and open that up. You can see that all of the, uh, the different parts of the drum kit get mapped to different notes on the keyboard here. You can just use the, uh, the pencil tool and you can paint in um, you know, your drum hits this way. So if I just program a simple beat, so let's put the snares on those and let's get some closed hi-hats. Right, so that's the basics. You can also use this tool here, uh, the velocity tool, to adjust the dynamic of the hit. Higher up, that is, the red 
the redder or more orangey or hot the colour is, the harder that part of the kit is being played and closer to a cool colour down to purple here, really, really, really quietly. So you're going from bang, 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 bang to gentle, right? Um, so yeah, basically using this tool uh, and varying the dynamic of hits is how you can start to make things sound a little bit more realistic and possibly interesting. Yeah, obviously that tempo works really well for drum and bass. That's basically a drum and bass beat that we've made already there. I can make it hip hop if I kind of uh, just half time it. So let's have this one snare there. So yeah, I think this tempo works quite well. Um, just as a kind of starting place and yeah going to use this exact groove pretty much um, Yeah, so I don't really use a uh, drum kit uh, This thing you can get away with it and if you do enough compression and processing to it It can sound okay obviously in context with everything else But if you're a nerd like me and you use it in your track, I will be able to spot it probably immediately um, So I have a dedicated drums plugin that I use for this exact purpose called uh, addictive drums 2 and uh, it's basically the same thing but you've just got a lot more flexibility um, customizability and just the sounds that are built into it are really really good so um, let me actually just put it back to its default state right so You've got a lot of different drum kits and presets built into it. Uh, you can change the sound and control it and get pretty much any kind of kit sound that you like out of it, essentially. So I quite like it for that. Um, and yeah, you can also be very specific about how you want to edit the kit. So for example, I can pitch the, the, bass, dr uh, the bass drum up or down. You can put compression and you know, distortion on it if you wanted to, uh, that kind of thing. Put some willy in it. Um, I actually have a preset that is my own custom setup that I like to use. Um, and I'll just give you a little blast with one of my own demo beats that should... There we go. So... So yeah, um, I really, really like this sound just as like my go-to starting place because I know that it sounds really, really fat and um, it's like weirdly flexible. So the kit sounds that I'm using come from uh, these specific packs for addictive drums. So the kick, the snare, and uh, I think all the toms and cymbals are from this metal pack. Um, but I also have, what else do I have? This modern soul and R&B works really, really nicely mixed in with that sometimes. I'll show you what that sounds like in a minute. So yeah, so some of the kits some of the packs that I have for this. I don't have a license for any of these. Um, I actually think that the metal ones, weirdly, are kind of like the most versatile. Um, they might not seem like that, but I find that a lot of the other kit sounds uh, have a lot of kind of character to them already, and they're really like distinctive, and this is just kind of more like a decent, realistic kit sound. That's all I'm really looking for um, at the moment. But yeah, if I play some of the Soul and R&B ones, let me go through some of these. Yeah, they're all quite sort of like open and roomy sounding um, and I just like my preset because it's a bit like tighter and a bit like more up in your face I guess um, and it works I somehow feel like it works for a whole bunch of genres it's not really just specifically metal it's just satisfying um, obviously it does work well for metal but I've managed to get it to work in more modern jazz contexts and like hip-hop grooves and stuff like that um, if I play my beat through and just kind of swap But 
yeah, I would say that the kick uh, and the toms particularly are what kind of drew me to the metal pack. I think the toms are the best of uh, any of the packs just because I like my toms. I almost like them to be like a second kick drum, um, just with a bit more sort of ag to it, I guess. Um, but yeah, that kick is just like super tight. It doesn't really ring out much, but it's fat, but not, it doesn't have a lot of sustain and release to it. It's just quite a tight sound. And I typically like that with, with drums. Um, so that's a really nice one as well, like really crisp and tight. So it's good for kind of hip hop or chops and that kind of thing, you know? So that's a little bit gank. Um, So yeah, hopefully that gives a little bit of an idea. I pretty much will like to program drums by hand. So let's do that right away. Let's just program a simple molar hi-hat thing. So I'm just gonna copy paste this pattern out. Okay, so I'm going to start trying to make that more interesting. Um, just to give myself a little bit to work with, I will copy this out a couple times and let's go through and kind of add some stuff to this. So if I do uh, a very quiet snare hit, that will basically become like a ghost note. Um, so you can kind of do some jungly like kind of stuff like that. Um, Very quiet, let me just, that's not the right place. Not bad, I'll just kind of experiment with moving that. Mm, kind of cool. Uh, if I kind of ooh, fucking hell. Okay, if I fit two of these little little ghost notes into one space here before the kick, get that nice little sort of thing going on. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, the start of how we're going to approach this, I guess. Um, Okay, let's start to uh, develop this a little bit. Um, basically, we've got our shell groove here. It's the kind of uh, standard go-to drummer's demo beat, right? So. Yeah, I wanna kind of start making that break away from things. I've started with a nice sort of long loop here and I've copied out all of these hi-hats, but um, to begin with, I think something that can actually help you start making things more interesting is to take things away. Let's have that gap repeat itself. So. Maybe something else we can do now is add in some open hi-hat, little accents here and there. Um, just to add a little bit more interest, so. Something to bear in mind with uh, programming open hi-hats. So this uh, A2 note here is uh, the most open hi-hat and these others are from C sharp two upwards. It's going in degrees of um, how open the hi-hat is so you can kind of gradually uh, get it to open up. Hang on. If you want to do a kind of a. So that's kind of cool about addictive drums. Um, but yeah, with this uh, with this open hi hat here, you can determine how long it stays open depending on how close um, the uh, this closed hi hat note is in relation to that. So you can hear there that. Um, the open hi-hat stayed open until that closed hi-hat happened, right? Um, I'm just going to get rid of that. So, so you can see there, it's just ringing out openly. So to, to close it, you have to put a, another closed hi-hat after it. And yeah, just by playing around with the distance of this, um, you can kind of get some cool things to happen. And um, 
so that kind of leads me that kind of leads me into um, the usefulness of hi-hat barks as I think they're referred to in the drumming community so yeah uh, if you're not familiar with that a hi-hat bark is yeah basically when you play the bass drum and the hi-hat at the same time uh, the open hi-hat but then you quickly close it so you get that I'll do a nice placement that's kind of a kind of funky a funk thing to do so that that's a good little trick that one Ugh. so yeah um, pretty much just through the combination of hi-hat barks uh, cool snare placements and stuff um, we can start to kind of create already there you might be able to imagine like a bass part or a chord progression that might work and fit around this so yeah I quite like starting out with the drum sometimes because it really helps with like um, coming up with riffs put one on the one here Let's maybe put a stop there. Let's make the hi-hats do something different than that general 16th note thing that they're doing. Um, so in Logic, uh, it's really easy to do things like this. Um, so if I just click out a bunch of hi-hats there, right? And if I highlight that, that bunch of notes there, and then I come over to this quantize menu and I change it to eighth note triplets, then we should get, so, let me put that bass drum back on the one there. Now you can kind of start doing some fun stuff with this. I like to use that as kind of a guide to put some weird bass drum accents in. You can see that that's slightly shifted off the grid line there because it's a triplet note. So it makes it a little bit easier to add in funny little uh, bass drum fills that go in unison with that. And if I make a couple of those, um, hi-hat barks that's pretty cool so yeah I quite like to do things that are weird um, I like that kind of like um, offbeat accents and that kind of thing so let's get into some of that something I like to do is kind of throw off where the one accent is um, so let's push and pull things around a little bit here um, so I'm going to grab that hi-hat pattern here and just copy that out and I'm going to make it carry on up to where are we going let's go up to there okay so so our one is obviously here but I think it's quite fun to just like spin that out a little bit um, and you can literally just use the uh, the note that we've programmed as kind of guide for that. So I'm going to drag this hi-hat bark over so that it's just off the one. Um, and I'll show you what that sounds like. So, so uh, yeah. And I'm going to do it with that one as well. Let's put in a speedy uh, little hi-hat fill here that's in regular 16th notes, which is also something I really like. I love this contrast between like things sort of speeding up and appearing as if they're kind of like speeding up and slowing down. And like, yeah, the easy way to kind of achieve that is to go between like quick 16th notes and triplets. So, you know, that's a fun trick. To make this kind of seem more dynamic and realistic, I'm basically just going to go through my sort of copied out, copy pasted pattern here and just add different variations and different things at different points to kind of make it seem a bit more interesting. So um, you can kind of just alternate the, uh, the velocity of the hi-hat pattern like that and it will change where things seem to be prioritised. Um, uh, that's a 
bit too weird. So, uh, and maybe on our one, let's actually have a crash cymbal just to kind of give the one here a little bit more impact. Right? So. Um, something that actually really helps me with writing sometimes or actually coming up with something more interesting is to just get rid of um, some of those, the fourth uh, snare hit on beat four. So. Let me get rid of this one. Hang on. We'll keep these two, but get rid of every second one of those that happens. I'm not sure if I've described that well. Something you might have noticed something accidental happened there. I heard a snare hit on the kick, but it's because I uh, I deleted a snare hit. So you can see when I click delete, you hear the playback of the snare there, and accidentally that ended up happening in time with that, which I thought sounded quite cool. So because that kind of so that's now led my ear into another way that this groove could go. So uh, fucking hell, hang on, that's pretty cool. So this triplet run here, I think we could make that more interesting if we put some accents. So um, and I'm going to leave these two as they are. Erase that one and that one, see what that does. So that kind of made that sequence a little bit more interesting, didn't it? Let's have a listen to that in its entirety to just see what I've come up with there kind of quickly. Nice. So that's a pretty good starting place and should be good as a basis for coming up with more things. So I think that's a pretty good place to wrap up for now. I shall be back with another part very soon where I will cover adding additional electronic drums production to this. But for now, we've got a pretty good basis to start off with. Catch you in the next part, hopefully. Take it easy.